We're picking up in Second Peter, and um, there's a long thought here that that begins in verse 13, and we're going to cover part of it. So this is kind of a two-part. Um, I went through the whole passage this morning in my quiet time, but it's too much to try to get in this morning on a morning devotion, or we'd be here all morning. Um, but but let me just share some thoughts with you that that are very very applicable to our time and our day and we need to be reminded of this and and I just want to start out by saying this this is not JMO's opinion this is God's opinion this is God's word and so don't give me any angry emojis um, I'm just sharing with you what what God says to us through his word as believers as Christ followers and remember Peter's talking about we have a, a way of choosing we can either choose and walk in the way of the world or we can walk in the way of the spirit and so God always admonishes us naturally to walk in the spirit um, and to walk in the spirit we know from Galatians chapter 5 is very counter to walking in the flesh we are prone to the flesh I was thinking of the hymn this morning and the line that says prone to wander Lord I feel it prone to leave the God I love and so we have choices every single day that we make whether we walk in the flesh and, and bear the fruit of the flesh. If you're not sure what that is, read Galatians chapter 5. Or we can walk in the Spirit and display the fruit of the Spirit. He's commanded us, He's called us, and He's empowered us to manifest, to walk in the things of the Spirit. I'm the first to admit, my flesh always wants to rule. Can anybody say an amen to that or give a thumbs up or a heart? Or anything like that just don't give an angry emoji my my flesh wants to rule and reign my life and he your flesh wants you to have your life ruled and reigned by the flesh but God has given us a spirit and so God help us to be ruled and reigned by the Holy Spirit not by the flesh so Paul and uh, Peter admonishes these Christians who were remember in the Roman world very different than what our world is today. Uh, you think we're living, living in evil, evil times. Just do some study and research in the Roman Empire and the Roman world. Um, very vile, very cruel, and uh, very um, domineering and making all of its people subject except for a small percentage of ruling class. And so Peter admonishes these believers who are living in the midst of this world, and they are facing persecution, and they're suffering. And so he writes this to him, beginning in verse 13. Be subject for the Lord's sake. Underline that. For the Lord's sake. All of our life is for the Lord's sake, right? As Christ followers, it's, it's not about us. It's about him. Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. He is Lord and he is master of our life, or should be. He's the only one that has rightful ownership of our life. But in the midst of this environment, Peter writes, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or the governors that are sent by the emperor to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. And so he's saying here, believer, remember, you're of another kingdom. And God has placed authority in positions, uh, men in, in positions of power and authority. Whether they be good or evil, they're all under the sovereign hand of God. And he says to them, be subject for the sake of the Lord to every institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this, underline this in your Bible, for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? That we be subject to those who are placed by God over our lives in positions or places of authority. I'm always reminded it's not the person in that position, but it's the authority that has been established that, that they rule. Some rule evilly, some rule uh, good. But he says that we're to place to the believer, replace, place ourselves under that authority. Uh, for this is the will of God, 
that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. You see, there's a principle in Scripture that when we are righteous, when we live right, it it puts it 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 bring it causes those who are evil or may rule in an evil in context in this particular passage that silences the ignorance of foolish people when we live Christ like I'm reminded of Jesus when he stood before Pilate um, he did not open his mouth in defense um, he had the authority he had the power. As scriptures tell us to bring down a legion of angels but here Christ was he suffered unjustly at the hands of evil man he subjected his will father if there be any other way let this cup pass from me he prayed in the garden he subjugated his will for the will of God so that you and I might have eternal salvation think about that I think, what if, what if Jesus had rebelled <laughs> against authority at that time? What if he had rebelled against it? There would be no hope for us. And so Peter's going to later in this passage go on to use Jesus as the example in that for us. But here he tells us, listen, by, by your righteous deeds, if I can paraphrase this, by your righteous act, you'll put to silence the foolishness of ignorant people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. In context, Peter's saying, listen, you've been freed by Christ. Many of those that were reading his letter here had, were in a place of subjugation and slavery. Um, if you want to understand the, the world of the Roman Empire and look at how slavery was in that day, probably about 30% or so of the population were property. They were slaves. They were owned by a master. They had no freedoms of themselves. And we know slavery is such a scourge, and it's not the will of God. Now here, in this passage, Peter and Paul, when he writes about it, he's not condoning slavery, not at all. But he's writing to those who are in that position and in that place of oppression. And he's reminding them, listen, you are of another kingdom. You, you belong to Christ now. The main goal and objective in your life right now is to glorify God as living in a righteous way and not rebelling. That's what, that's what he's saying here. He says, so live as sir, but don't use your freedom as a cover-up to rebel. Verse 17, honor everyone. Love your brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. And so honor is that way of giving preference to. And then he begins in verse 18. He says, servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to those who are unjust. For this is a gracious thing then, mindful of God, who endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin, you are beaten for it, that you endure. But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Now, let me clarify a couple of things. Nowhere in Scripture are we commanded to be subject um, to, to laws or rules that would violate the Word of God. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, we know in particular right now the, the party that's in leadership in our country uh, would condone and endorse um, all manners of sexual identity, uh, the LGBTQ community. Uh, they, they condone, not only do they condone, but they promote the taking of innocent life through abortion. Now, those things are clear mandates against the Word of God. And so uh, we live in that, and yes, we should voice righteousness in that. Uh, we, we, of course, we have that message of the Scripture. Uh, but, but in that, um, if you or I are commanded to participate in that by our government authorities, then we would have to say, no, we're not. Here's a clear example. I believe there's coming a day when that if I... If I preach the scriptures, 
the, and, and, I, and I preach that homosexuality is a sin, if I preach that transgender change is a sin, there's going to come a day when the government is probably going to come in and say, JMO, you can't do that. There may be a day right now even that Facebook may pull this video. I don't know. However, at that point, I would have to stand and say, no, this is what the Word of God says, and I'm going to be obedient to the Word of God. And so that's kind of an example in our culture where that might apply today. Um, so the message that Peter and Paul also says is, listen, if I can kind of wrap this up in a big picture thing, is you are, you're in a fallen world, and you're going to have righteous rulers, and you're going to have unrighteous rulers. Remember, your mission in that, your place, your, your, your citizenship is of another kingdom. And live in a way that, that, that does not rebel against that authority, but can live within that authority and continue to preach, continue to propagate, continue to encourage righteousness in your land. Make your voice known. We have that freedom in this country. Uh, but he says, listen, don't rebel. Um, there's a deeper study that we could do in rebellion in Scripture. But quite frankly, the bottom line of rebellion is the Scriptures put it as a, as a demonic activity to be rebellious. And so we're to be subject to Christ and obedient to him and live as salt and light. Folks, I just want to encourage us that, that no matter how far down the path and road our country goes, there's still a mission that he has called us to do as believers. The, the, the main thing is the main thing, and that is that we be salt and light, a witness of the gospel, not a witness of our opinion, but a witness of the gospel to a lost and dying world. Because there is an eternity, and every human being is going to face that precipice of eternity when their body dies on this side, and they enter into life eternal. They're going to spend an eternity either in the presence of God by being saved by the blood of Jesus, or they're going to spend eternity separated from God in hell. And so the mission that he has given us is to share the gospel and make disciples of all nations. Keep that in mind. I pray the Lord blesses you today. May he use us to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, uh, to cultivate a seed that's been in somebody's heart, or by God's grace, we might be able to see somebody come to know Jesus and be saved and have that hope of eternal life. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. May he empower us by the Holy Spirit to walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Have a great day.